And back now to the tragic breaking news we told you about off the top. At least 13 people are dead, 20 others wounded, following a shooting at a community college in Oregon. The shooter was lining people up and asking if they were Christian. If they said yes, then they were shot in the head. Are you a Christian? He would ask them. And if you're a Christian, stand up. And they would stand up. And he said, good, because you're a Christian, you're going to see God in just about one second. And then he shot and killed them. A few weeks ago, 13 people were killed in a school shooting in Oregon. The victims were all Christians. The local church reacted to the tragedy with a silent vigil. But many Christians are responding in a different way by arming themselves. Blessed be the Lord, my rock who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. And I have been amazed at how many Christians over the past five years have gone and gotten their concealed permits. We sense that something's happening. Another nice little Italian gun for an Italian pastor. And I read the Bible every day. Nowhere in that Bible do I see anywhere that it says I can't defend myself. I am officially running for President of the United States. In the upcoming presidential campaign, the arms debate is a central theme, whilst the current president is calling for tougher regulation. There's been another mass shooting in America. We are the only advanced country on Earth that sees these kinds of mass shootings every few months. Many conservative Christians are using the Oregon killings as further proof of the need for firearms. We need that. In fact, I have a license to carry in New York. Can you believe that? Nobody knows that. In the name of Jesus, yes, we believe in love. And you freeze me up and count me to the light. Yeah. In many Americans, there seems to exist a bizarre mixture, that of a faith in God, but a trust in firearms. How can one combine the peaceful message of the Bible with a holy faith in weaponry? and ask you to forgive me. And Jesus, I surrender control of my life to you. Do you understand why there's not enough money to buy this gun from me? And do you understand why there's no government on the face of this earth that has the right to take this gun from me? Yeah. Louisville, Kentucky the heart of the Bible Belt, the home of Kentucky Fried Chicken and thousands of churches. This is a deeply religious town, but the city has another love, guns. One pastor, Ken Pagano, encourages his congregation to bring their guns to church in honor of the Second Amendment, which protects the right of every American to bear arms. It was an open carry celebration, God, guns, and gospel. So we, we of course, did it. We wanted to glorify God. That's what we try to do. Um, guns were, in that sense, a part of the draw, uh, but we also wanted to promote the gospel and that we as Christian people can be people of faith and also be people of firearms. No contradiction. We're going to talk about the fact that we can be a Christian, a lover of God, and be supportive and, and impact our community, but also have an appreciation as Americans for the right to keep and bear arms. But Pagano recently made the news when he went a step further and held a raffle to win a free handgun during the church service. Giving away a gun in church? As a part of an outreach, yes. For, for us, that sounds amazing in Europe. And the deputy won it, one of our deputies. That was even more amazing. What we did was legal, I believe biblical, and I know it was constitutional. They didn't have to bring him every Sunday, but I know somebody did. You. Are you still packing now? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you have your gun on you. Uh, can you see it? No. Okay. I have a Bible on me, too. Can I see that, too? <laughs> we, could, we could do this later at the range, <laughs> but yeah, we, I, have, I, have, I have them on me. On the way to Pagano's shooting range, a procession of police cars passed by, 
there had been a report of a shooting at a school in nearby Louisville. After a few hours of tension, we found out that fortunately, no one had been injured. All right, Mr. My Mr. James, let me put you on hold for a second and uh, we'll run the card and then uh, let you know that everything's gone through. You'll be filling out a waiver of liability and you'll be shooting the very first thing. Recently, Pastor Pagano has chosen to dedicate himself full time to guns. He has left the church and opened a shooting range. So when he stopped being a pastor, he became a shooting instructor. Yeah, uh, well, uh, 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 a shooting in instructor who was a shepherd. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the holy book. Th there's a gun in there. So you always carry a small gun with you. Always. But I usually always have a full-size one too. And that's the one you also carry? Yes. Yes, these are with me every day. A pastor who's carrying a gun, or a former pastor. And a Bible. And a Bible. They were always with me, even when I pastored. Come on in. Pagano is a deeply religious Christian and also passionate about firearms. Apparently, the two go hand in hand, as we discover on the range. If you don't use it, you lose it. You ever heard that saying? Same way with these. I carry every day to exercise my right. Go, it's my right. But I also am there so that I can defend myself and my family and my friends. So it's you know, protection and your right. For, for protection and just solely because it's my right. Given to me by God. When you limit something like guns, you're actually preventing the good people from doing what they need to do. Church is always first, and then we always go to the gun range, and we always just shoot and just interact as a family, and family is key, and then God and guns and stuff. It's all connected. <laughs> yes, it's all, it's just like, it's, it's just all, yeah, it's all very connected. It's awesome. Thank you. In the papers the next morning, there was no mention of the shooting in Louisville. In Europe, this would have been front page news. But here, there was a bigger story about the college shooting in Oregon that had occurred only a week earlier. Over a thousand people gathered last night to remember the victims of Thursday's school shooting. In a grim coincidence, these students are being buried on the same day as National Gun Day. To mark the day, Kentucky held one of the biggest arms shows in America. It's a 308 caliber, and uh, this is my personal gun. It's my favorite gun to shoot. Uh, I shoot long distance with this, 1,000 yards, uh, and all the way, you know, down to 100. Why do you carry a gun? Um, for a lot of reasons. I think everyone should have the freedom to be able to defend themselves against, you know, either other citizens, uh, any kind of danger, or the government, if need be. Can you celebrate National Gun Day when there are funerals in Oregon? Just because a bad person uses a gun to do a bad thing doesn't make that thing bad. You know, a gun didn't kill those people. Well, they were killed by a gun. They were killed by a gun, but somebody had to pull the trigger. But when there weren't guns, they wouldn't be dead. He could have used a hammer or a knife or a club a gun-free zone. Someone came in with a gun even though he wasn't supposed to. And look what happened. People died. God, gospel, and guns. For many in the American South, this seems to be the holy trinity, and no one can convince them otherwise. 
not even their president. Somehow this has become routine. The reporting is routine. My response here at this podium ends up being routine. And what's become routine, of course, is the response of those who oppose any kind of common sense gun legislation. How important is the Second Amendment to you? Well, it's fundamental. Without that one, the rest of them fall. Because it's, it's a right that you should have for, you know, to protect yourself. You look at what's going on in other places of the world, governments take over and they run people out. I think if you believe in God, you believe in defense and protection, then um, through you they're connected. It's all about freedom. You know, God offers us freedom through Jesus. Guns offer us freedom from government. In Kentucky, life is lived in accordance with the Bible. Weapons are a fundamental part of daily life, even in church. This is to register to win one of the guns. Good luck next time. Hang on to those, okay? To register to win one of the guns. Oh, okay. Thank you. Danny, do you want one of these for that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At a local community church service, tonight's pastor is Chuck McAllister. McAllister is famous for his show on the Wildlife Channel. He is a self-styled tough guy, hunter and evangelist. I love to hunt. I love to fish. God sees no geographical boundaries. We were the number one show on the Outdoor Channel. We had uh, several million viewers every week and take about three minutes to share the gospel and give people an opportunity of coming to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So you use your television show to get people to Jesus? Absolutely. God doesn't really need me. I'm just privileged to do this. Everyone at the service is entered into a lottery. The prizes, nine guns. Two of these are for children and seven are for adults. The draw is held after the service. And that's how you have to look at this, from the context of a man in Kentucky, in the, in the United States, who doesn't go to church, but who's very interested in the outdoors and hunting and fishing and all of those things. And when he hears about an event where guns, which are very expensive, are being given away, he's gonna come. The more guns that are given away, the more unchurched people that come. Amongst all these churches in Kentucky, there stands a small mosque in the city of Louisville. Hello. Saad. How you doing? Hi. Cornelius, nice to meet you. Assad. Are there many Muslims living here in Louisville? About a thousand plus families. And so not, not even one percent of the population. Correct. Many of the mosque's congregation are refugees who have escaped conflict. How would people react if you would give away guns here at your mosque? It would not be favorable. We would be labeled uh, as a terrorist group. And uh, personally, I would like not. Jihad or, yeah. Yes, uh, personally, I would never allow that because it's not a place to promote weapons. This is a place where people come in and worship and connect to God. It is not a place to come in and learn how to fight. Assad Nawabi himself fled from Afghanistan to the US in the 80s. He now runs an IT company and counts shooting as one of his hobbies. Guns as being in our DNA. So, so even for you, uh, a person who wasn't born here, it's still in your DNA? Correct. I mean, I do my hunting and fishing and uh, I do my recreational shooting. 
But a church, a mosque, or a synagogue should be a place of peace and a place of worship and not a place to promote violence or weapons. How many people are carrying guns here, do you think? Oh, probably 25% of the people are carrying, and some of the ladies are carrying them in their handbags, and you'd never know when they have them on ankle holsters or... Uh, are you carrying? I am carrying. Yes. Where? Because I cannot see it. Wow. And are you any good? Uh, well, I was able to kill this elk in Colorado in 2010. Are you carrying right now? No, not right now. But as I've got one not far away, so out in the truck, but not in here, no. And to be quite honest, are you here tonight to meet God or, or to win a gun? Both, both. I already know Christ. I'd rather win a gun. <laughs> yeah, win a gun. Win a gun. This is the uh, most valuable gun I've got in my collection. It's a Browning Sweet 16. Belgian made. Traveling further south to Charleston, South Carolina. Here, the uneasy relationship between guns and religion is more complex than ever. Recently, Charleston has been in the news for a tragic reason. Shooting at a church in Charleston happened just about an hour ago. Apparently, an address that corresponds to the Emanuel AME Church. My phone rang. My sister called me from Dallas, Texas. She said, Elena was shooting at the church. And I said to her, I'm on my way. As I was running to try to get to the church, the police grabbed me. He said, ma'am, I'm sorry, I can't let you go back there. I said, sir, you don't understand. My mom was in that church. My niece called me. She said, Auntie Granny gone. Only thing I can do is scream. And a lady from the corner said, your name is, I said, Nadine. Nadine Lance Coyer. I said, Ethel Lance was my mother. And she said to me, I'm sorry. Your mom was one of the one who got killed. And I just dropped out on my knees. In total, nine people died, all African Americans. Tensions rose. Dylan Roof had wanted to start a race war, but the following morning, Nadine spoke from her doorstep. I'm a Christian woman. I believe in God. And God is a man, an unchanging hand, and that's what I'm holding on to. I have to pray on it. My mama always taught it me. Regardless of what people have done to you, don't hold it in your heart for that. Let it go. Let it go. Don't give them that power over you. And all these words and everything that she taught me started coming back to me. Despite I know this young man took my mother. But I know I had to do the right thing. I had to forgive him. I have to. In the US legal system, the victim is able to address the perpetrator if they so wish. And in court, Nadine spoke directly to her mother's killer. You are representing the family of Ethel Lance, is that correct? And you are whom, ma'am? The daughter. The daughter. When I got up, I said to you, you took something very precious away from me. I will be not, never again to talk with her, never again to hold her. I don't see her, but I forgive you. I forgive you. 
But, but how can you forgive the man who killed your mother? Easy. I have a heart. I was taught from a very strong woman who believed in God. She taught me well. Another victim in the shooting was the pastor of the church, Daniel Simmons. His granddaughter also chose to speak in court. Everyone's plea for your soul is proof that they, they lived in love and their legacies will live in love. So hate won't win. We meet her at a park in Charleston. I thought it was a very evil and heinous act to go into a place of worship, any place of worship, and to murder people. I wanted to show this person two things. One, that we're not the people who you thought we were. And two, that you don't have the power to control my reaction or my emotion. And in that memory, you're saying that hate won't win. You said it there, and you're starting a campaign called Hate Won't Win. Tell us about it, please. Yes, um, my siblings and I, we, we sat down and we prayed about what would be the best thing to do for our grandfather to carry on his legacy and the legacy of the other victims. Hate won't win. Love instead of hate. Many Christians, also from the South, have joined the movement, speaking out against the culture of firearms in their country. The opportunity to meet President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. We have t-shirts, um, they, they say hate won't win in the middle, and there's a black hand and a white hand making a heart. We gave one to the president. He asked all the families, you know, is there anything that I can do to um, help? And I told him about the social media challenge, and he said, oh, well, I have a couple of followers. I think I could help you with that. A tweet that President Obama has sent out, and it said, I'm so inspired by the grace displayed by the Simmons family and the other victims of the Charleston attack, hate won't win, or he used the hashtag hate won't win. And it, our following base went from about 3,000 to 18, 19,000 really quickly. Whatever he was trying to create didn't happen. Because of you and the yes. other people because of your forgiveness. Oh, yeah. They stepped up so that we got to enjoy the freedoms that we get to enjoy today. And all of a sudden, I realized it was my turn, and I squared my shoulders, and I took my M16, and I proudly walked my post. Is it strange that a man of God is giving away guns? No. I don't think so. And, and do you think Chick McAllister can win you over for God? Yes. Are you here tonight to meet Christ, or maybe that you can win a gun? Meet Christ. Yeah, I'm already a Christian, but I'd like to win a gun. That'd be fun. Right now, just raise your hand. I prayed that prayer with you, and I meant it with all my heart. Raise it high so I can at least see where you are. Thank you. Thank you, young man. Thank you. Now, if you just raise your hand, I want you to look at me. Just look at me. I know who you are. I saw you raise your hand. Just look at me. I know how to pray for you. I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to mark a card, and then I'm going to leave you alone. I am going to pray for you. You've got this information card that you were handed. That's how we're going to draw for the guns here in just a second. I mean, you know, to bribe people with guns to come to church. Are you kidding me? Ain't no way. If you have to give guns for people to come to church, you're not, we're not... We're not talking about the same God we know. For the youth giveaway, we will give away, it's a Rossi single shot 20 gauge. <laughs> Elliot Cross, you go see Rob and we'll get your certificate filled out. Next we have a Savage Axis Axis 270 with scope. And that winner is Teresa Kelly. <laughs> As Christians, if we are going to ask the nation to be less violent, then we should demonstrate that. That's it. If you didn't win, you were not a loser. You got your belly filled. You had a good time. Let's give these guys a round of applause for their winning tonight. These are the lucky winners. After a quick background check, they will be able to pick up their weapons from their local gun store. What did you win? Single shot, 20 gauge. Is your first gun? No. How many guns do you have? Between five to ten. 
How old are you? 14. Is it your first gun? Yes. <laughs> you won your first gun in a church service? Yes. Makes it... Make it special. Makes it special. You, you keep coming back to the issue of the guns. Yeah. The issue... That is not an issue with us. And I understand that it's become an issue in Europe, but maybe in Europe you should wake up and realize that there is a revolution taking place and the church's doors are closing at an alarming rate while mosques are opening and while an ideology that is, is being taught that teaches children and others to hate and to kill and to maim. Chuck McAllister seems to embody the slogan, God, Guns and Gospel. In a factory in Florida, one company is taking it a step further, making specialized Christian weapons. Office, this is Spike's office. That's the boss's office. This is the office? Yeah, yeah, this is the office where uh, Spike does his bidding. <laughs> okay. There's not a lot of place to work anymore, I no, think. No, he has a lot of toys. <laughs> toys? <laughs> yeah. Class three is kept in here. That's machine guns and, and um, suppressors and things like that. So, so the, the weapons are built here? Yeah, yeah we build weapons here, yes. In this factory, the weapons are all hand-built. Their speciality? The Crusader. A rifle with a Bible scripture engraved on its magazine intake. These are all Crusaders. These are all Crusaders? Yes. Wow. The reason we put the Bible verse on was because we have, um, we have friends of the company and, and people that work here that were overseas in, uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan. While they were over there, they actually saw um, terrorists and insurgents and people who were trying to harm Americans using American-made weapons. So knowing what we know about uh, Islam and about Muslim extremists, we put a Bible verse on the rifles because we know that they will never use it. So anything with a Bible verse and a cross and anything like that is basically forbidden for them. So that's why we put it on there. It's like an anti-Muslim gun. Basically, yes, it's an anti-Muslim gun. There is no such thing as an anti-Islamic gun. For me to have a Muslim-proof gun, there is no such thing. It is a, uh, I would say it's a commercialization. It is a propaganda uh, of the right wing to make money. It's nothing more than that. But aren't you using God's word to sell weapons? The Quran preaches violence, and God also doesn't want us to um, sit back and just let someone kill us. So, well, I guess you kind of have to put the two together. <laughs> ah, good. Hi there. Hi. Did you sell anything today? Yeah, I sold a couple of the uh, Crusader rifles, actually. Okay. Yeah. James has just bought a Crusader. He asked us to only use his first name, otherwise apparently Muslims would know where to find him. Uh, on this side, it has the Crusader cross. And if you know the history that, you know, the Crusaders, they were taking the Holy Land back from the uh, Muslims. And then on this side, we have the verse. And that's a verse from the Bible. So your comment about, you know, guns and, and God, do they go together? Well, that verse is in the Bible. It's in Psalms 144.1. So for you, gun and guns are connected? Sure. And this one here is, belongs to my wife. I purchased one about two, three weeks ago. She saw it and she wanted one. She doesn't even shoot, but she wanted to have one to pass to her grandson somewhere down the road. So this gun will stay in the family? This gun will stay in the family. Neither one of them will be sold. At the Emmanuel Church in Charleston, Nadine describes how, on the day of the shooting, she went to the morning service, whilst her mother went in the evening. If she said that she needed help with something or something like that, then I would have probably was there. When your mom had said, join me tonight, or needed some help, you would have been yeah. at the shooting. <laughs> Emotions ran high when she met the president at a memorial service. 
he walked up to me and I stand up and I said, President Obama, I'm Nadine Coyer. And he said to me, I know who you are. Come here, sweetie. I'm sorry for your loss. And we hugged. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that The grieving families pay tribute to the victims together. And in his subsequent speech, President Obama made clear his views on American gun laws. It cannot be this easy for somebody who wants to inflict harm on other people to get his or her hands on a gun. Each time this happens, I am going to say that we can actually do something about it, but we're going to have to change our laws. And this is not something I can do by myself. We're allowing one man to have too much control. No man should have that kind of control in this country to usurp power that belongs to the people. He has no right. I think we should have the right to protect ourselves. He's trying to take her guns, yeah. yeah. And I don't think that needs to happen. We're going to talk about the fact that we can be a Christian, a lover of God, but also have an appreciation as Americans for the right to keep and bear arms. God, gospel, and guns. It is the holy trinity for many American Christians. They have faith in their God and trust in their firearms. Their belief in both is unshakable. This gun is necessary? It is, at some time, at some point. But it's getting too available. And the wrong people are getting their hands on them. We have to draw the line from somewhere. Here in America, we've seen so many mass shootings, and they're just on the rise because of all the new weapons that are coming out with these capabilities that really shouldn't be in the hands of everyday people. And so um, I certainly um, think that God and guns are not connected. May God continue to shed his grace uh -huh. on the United States of America. Yeah.